Hello, my brush lads, lasses, and everybody in between. My name is Tyler, and today we are going to be looking at a tribal commander deck that has no creature cards for the tribe that we're building. Yes, you heard me right. Ignoring Changeling, and as I'm one to do, the tribe in question for this deck exists solely as a token created by a collection of artifacts and a single instant. It's germs. But before we get into that, I want to tell you that if you like what we're doing here at Partners With, please feel free to sub and shoot us a like and leave us a comment. What's your favorite obscure creature type? All right, so what are germs? Created by the living weapon artifacts, Phyrexian germ tokens are black 00 creatures. When the living weapon equipment enters the battlefield, you create one of these germ tokens and equip said living weapon to it so they don't immediately die. The goal of the deck is simple. Turbo out our living weapons, apply as many anthem effects as we can to keep them alive even without their equipment, and flicker the living weapons for more germs and protect our artifacts. For our commander, I settled on Sharoom the Hegemon, a 5-5 legendary artifact sphinx for three white, blue, black, she has flying, and when she enters the battlefield, she returns an artifact from our graveyard to the battlefield. Being an artifact herself means she pairs very nicely with our suite of artifact flicker spells, making her a good source of graveyard recursion. Plus, her colors gave us access to everything we needed to make the deck work. Let's start with the centerpiece of our deck, the living weapons. Every single one has the baseline ability of making a 0-0 germ when it enters the battlefield, then attaching itself to that germ and comes with an equip cost like any standard equipment, so I won't cover that for every single one. We have Batter Bone, which gives plus one plus one Vigilance and Lifelink, Batter Skull, which gives plus four plus four Vigilance and Lifelink, and can return to our hand for three mana, Bone Horde, which gives plus X plus X, where X is the total amount of creatures in all graveyards, Flayer Husk, which gives plus one plus one, Cauldra Complete, which is indestructible, and gives plus five plus five, first strike, trample, indestructible, haste, and the ability to exile any creature it damages. Lash Writhe, which gives plus one plus one for each swamp we control. Mortar Pod, which gives plus oh plus one, and the ability for the equipped creature to sacrifice itself to do one damage to any target. Necro Pouncer, which gives plus three plus one and haste. Nettle Cyst, which gives plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Scythe Claw, which gives plus one plus one and halves an opponent's life total when the equipped creature connects. Sickle Slicer, which gives plus two plus two. Skin Wing, which gives plus two plus two and flying. And Strand Walker, which gives plus two plus four and reach. Well, these are our main method of generating germs. They aren't technically our only ones. Grip of Phyresis is an instant that lets us steal an equipment, make a germ, and then attach that equipment to that germ. There's also the Riptide Replicator, our only source of non-00 germs. It's an artifact that has us choose a color and a creature type when it enters the battlefield, and casts for X and 4. It enters with X charge counters on it, and for 4 and tap, makes an XX creature token of the chosen type and color, with X being the amount of charge counters. As funny as it is having all of our creatures be 0-0 tokens when they're on their own, we do need ways of keeping them alive when they aren't equipped, so we can flicker the equipment for more germs. This is where our blanket anthems come in. Gideon, ally of Zendikar, can drop and immediately give us an emblem that gives our creatures plus one plus one. And being an emblem, it's impossible to remove, and as such, it's our best way of pumping our creatures. Adaptive Automaton has us choose a creature type when it enters the battlefield and gives all creatures of that type plus one plus one in addition to being that type itself. Brass Herald has us choose a creature type and gives all creatures of that type plus one plus one and has another ability, but given that our germs don't exist as creatures in the deck, its ability doesn't matter. Elish Norn is probably our most frightening anthem as she gives our stuff plus two plus two while also weakening the opponent's creatures by minus two minus two. Our artifact-based anthems include the Icon of Ancestry, Obelisk of Erd, 
and Vanquisher's Banner. For enchantment-based anthems, we have a little bit more spice. While some, such as Black Moon, Dictate of Heliod, Force of Virtue, Glorious Anthem, Rally the Ranks, Death Pit Offering, Leyline of the Meek, and Shared Triumph, more or less just give power toughness boosts, at a set rate, we also have some that actually do more. Call for Unity slowly gains Unity counters and pumps our stuff by the number of counters it has. Cathar's Crusade puts plus one plus one counters on all of our creatures whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. Commander's Insignia grows our creatures by how much we've cast our commander from the command zone. Etchings of the Chosen can sacrifice a creature of a chosen type to give indestructible to a different creature of the chosen type. Ethereal Absolution acts as a mini Elish Norn that can also turn creature cards in graveyards into flying spirits for us. Intangible Virtue gives our creature tokens Vigilance and plus one plus one. Marshall's Anthem buffs our team and can get back some creature cards from the graveyard. Radiant Destiny gives Vigilance if we have the City's Blessing in addition to its buff, and Spear of Heliod acts as both an Anthem and a source of removal. Now in order to boost our army of germs, the easiest method we have is to flicker our living weapons, or exile them and have them return. Ghostly Flicker, Teferi's Time Twist, and Teleportation Circle can keep our stuff safe from targeted removal while also adding to our board. If we don't have access to our flicker spells, we can also try cloning our germs or living weapons with things such as the Masterwork of Ingenuity, which copies any equipment when it enters the battlefield, Mirror Works, which makes us tokens of our non-token artifacts if we pay an additional two when they enter the battlefield, Clone Legion, which can just double all of our germs, Echo Storm, which makes a copy of an artifact for each time we've cast our commander from the command zone, Rite of Replication, which can either make us 1 token for 4 mana or 5 tokens for 9 mana, and Sahili's Artistry, which can make both a living weapon and a germ. Now, those are the cards that generally keep our deck strategy going, but we do have a few smaller categories. Tutors like Fabricate, Increasing Ambition, and Steel Shaper's Gift can grab us any of the artifacts that we need out of our library. Open the Vaults and Trusty Retriever can grab us things from our graveyard, and Faithful Mending and Mysterious Tome can draw us cards. If an opponent tries to target our stuff, we also have Professor's Warning, Lazatet Plating, and Leonin Abunas to keep our stuff safe. Dakon Shadow Slayer exiles creatures or can put artifacts from our hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. Noxious Gearhold destroys creatures and gains us life while entering the battlefield and being an artifact also plays very well with our flicker strategy. Cranial Plating can give one of our creatures that power boost that it needs to just finish off another player. Eliminate deals with low mana value threats. And Profane Transfusion is an insurance policy for if our life total gets just too low, allowing us to swap two players' life totals and make an XX Horror Artifact Creature Token, where X is equal to the difference. Now moving on to our mana base, our arguably most important land is Academy Ruins. For just one in a blue and tap, it can repeatedly pull artifacts from our graveyard and put them on top of our deck for additional uses. In a similar vein, we also have Buried Ruin for one-time recursion. For access to all three of our colors, we have Arcane Sanctum, Command Tower, and to a lesser extent, Exotic Orchard, though the Orchard does require our opponents to be at least partially in our colors. Ancient Spring can also technically give us access to all of our colors, though only blue regularly and only generating a white and a black if we sacrifice it. To fix our mana, we run fetches in Esper Panorama, Evolving Wilds, Flooded Strand, Marsh Flats, Myriad Landscape, and Polluted Delta. Sequestered Stash acts almost like a reverse buried ruin, sacrificing itself to let us mill five cards, then put any artifact in our grave on top of our library. We also have Inventor's Fair to gain some life each turn since we have so many artifacts, or to tutor for an artifact when we don't need it anymore. Watery Grave, Temple of Epiphany, Henge Gate and Mistgate Pathways, Hollowed Fountain, and Godless Shrine can give us access to up to two of our colors. And while Ash Barrens doesn't have quite the same versatility, it can cycle itself away to grab any basic from our deck. 
And speaking of cycling, we have Secluded, Step, and Drifting Meadow, which are lands that we can cycle away for cards if we don't need the mana or if we just need to dig deeper. While Arch of Araska can serve as a mana sink to draw cards if we manage to turn on City's Blessing. Finally, top things off with three basic islands, nine basic planes, and a single basic swarm. And we are ready to go. Thank you all for joining me on this admittedly kinda odd deck tech. I love pushing the boundaries of what I can do with tribal builds. I'm still trying to make mono black dinosaurs work, despite the fact that there are only three of them and one of them is the commander. So I hope the deck that revolves around a very precise creature token gave you as much entertainment as it did me. Please remember that if you like what we do here, leave us a like, shoot us a sub, and leave us a comment. I've been Tyler, and I will see you all next time. Peace!